Julian joins us uh, now on our Newsmaker Line. Julian, welcome back to the program. Thank you for being with us. Good day, Sean. I know you follow the news closely. I know you see the narrative. Now, there is a big brouhaha in the United States, the same media, by the way, that WikiLeaks exposed as colluding with Hillary Clinton's campaign, with near hysteria getting up to the president and John Podesta with Hillary's campaign, claiming over and over and over again that it's clear the CIA says so, even though there's no new evidence whatsoever that we didn't have prior to the election, and that the FBI contradicts, and James Clapper, the national director of intelligence, contradicts, that in fact the Russians tried to implement influence and the elections and and this hacked information came from them and you're saying that is outright false that's a falsehood uh, our source is not the Russian government so in other words let me be clear Russia did not give you the Podesta documents or anything from the DNC that's correct can you confirm whether or not you have information involving hacked info from the RNC uh, we received uh, about three pages of information to do with the RNC and uh, Trump uh, but it was already public somewhere else. Okay, so in other words, there was nothing significant. There was nothing <clears throat> comparable to what happened. So what Reince Priebus said on NBC to Chuck Todd this weekend was true, and NBC had it wrong. Well, as far as we're Wiki aware of. As far as you're yeah. aware of. Yeah. Now, the CIA supposedly says the Russians definitely tried to influence the U.S. election. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's very interesting. Uh, the key quote <clears throat> uh, for us is from James Clapper on the 17th of November. James Clapper is the head of the DNI, he's the director of national intelligence, who oversees all uh, 17 U.S. intelligence agencies. Uh, and so his statement is, as far as the WikiLeaks connection, this is made to the House Intelligence Committee, uh, as far as the WikiLeaks connection, uh, the evidence is not strong, and we don't have a good insight into the sequencing of the releases or when the data may have been provided. We don't have good insight into that. So L let me let me for the sake of our audience, Julian, yeah. let me play the exact quote. This is James Clapper, the director of national intelligence, saying exactly what you did, that in fact the Russian government well to to what he exactly said, uh that in fact he was very, very clear uh, in saying that WikiLeaks connection with Russian hacking is not strong. Watch. As far as the uh, WikiLeaks uh a connection the evidence there is uh, not uh, as strong and we don't have good insight into uh, the sequencing of the releases uh, or when that uh, when the data may have been provided we don't we don't have uh, as good insight into that so that confirms exactly what you're saying can you answer whether or not there there's a report out today and there was a report out earlier this week that, in fact, they can trace back some leaks to the Department of Homeland Security as it relates to the state of Georgia. Do you know anything about those? <clears throat> uh, I looked when the uh, so, look, let's pull back a bit. There's a deliberate attempt this week uh, to conflate a whole lot of different issues together. Uh, it seems to be uh, uh, as a desire. Uh, an extremely dangerous and foolish desire uh, to flip uh, members of the U.S. Electoral College around uh, into getting up John Kasich or Hillary Clinton on the 19th. Mm -hmm. uh, it's foolish because it won't happen. Uh, it's dangerous because the argument that it should happen can be used uh, in four years' time or eight years' time for a sitting government that doesn't want to hand over power. Uh, and that's a very dangerous thing. There, there's uh, Clinton-aligned PACs putting out ads with lots of celebrities trying to push uh, these electors to do it. So how are they rhetorically going about it? Well, there's our publications that did make a significant uh, influence during election. Lots and lots of Americans took them up, read them, analyzed them, forwarded them to each other. It was the most discussed topic, uh, according to Facebook, uh, throughout October. Okay, but then we have uh, US intelligence saying they don't know how we got our stuff or when we got it and us saying uh, we didn't get it uh, from a state uh, then there's hacking of various systems that have occurred okay uh, presumably to get intelligence uh, the Israelis do it the Russians do it the Chinese do it the French do it uh, every year and every election cycle to understand what policies are so it's no surprise at all that there's record uh, of uh, Russians or others hacking a lot of these systems That's well, let, me, let me put the That's question intelligence collection. let me put this a different way the state of Georgia in the United yeah. States the Secretary of State there now 
confirms 10 separate cyber attacks on its network that were all traced back to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security addresses. Do you know anything about that? Uh, I don't know about this specific case, but the state uh, hacking I do know uh, about because I followed it when it first came up in the original FBI report. Um, <clears throat> look, the, these are about election uh, voter registration systems, uh, not election, not vote counting systems. Right. Uh, it seems to be just basic identity theft. If you if you read what uh, the DHS said at the time, it said that it looked like these were going to be sold online in black markets. Is Really, is the, the FSB going to be selling um, voter registration records uh, online in black markets? No, of course, it's uh, almost overwhelmingly likely that it is just identity well, theft. Let me ask you this. DHS, as far as the DHS uh, attacks are concerned, uh, that could be a number of things. It could be the DS, DHS just testing security uh, and then people using the logs of those tests uh, or rather misusing them to try and claim that, uh, that there's been attempted hacks of these systems. Well, I certainly respect, and, and by the way, it is important to point out some of your history. When you were 16 years old, you did hack into NASA. You did hack into the Department of Defense and I believe one other agency is that true? Uh, there's a number of books saying that. Okay. <laughs> so there's a pretty good chance it might be true. I've never right. been charged for that. I no. would like to keep it that way. Yeah, that's true. Maybe the statute of limitations has moved on. I, I have said. It, I think it has, actually. I have said that there are two things that America needs to take from you and some of these other high-profile cases. And one is there's proof positive that we don't really have cybersecurity at a level we need for, for a country that is so actively involved in intelligence and, and influencing world events, etc. So you've done us a favor because now we could fix the problem if we so desired but in all the years president obama has been in office he did nothing to fix it the second thing that i think you you did for america which i think is very important is you exposed how corrupt our government is and i'll get to that in a second without revealing your sources would it be fair to say that the information as it relates to wikileaks and john podesta's emails came from within the united states to you uh we have said it has not come from a state party uh we know where it came from originally of course it's john podesta it's from the dnc uh, etc uh there's been no claim that has been held up no, it's not even maintained anymore uh that uh, any of the information has been modified uh or is fake so well, you can't confirm or deny if this information came from within the united states i we're unhappy that we felt that we needed to even say that it wasn't a state party. Normally we say nothing at all, uh, mm -hmm. but we, we have a, a conflict of interest. Our, our, we have an uh, excellent reputation, a strong interest uh, in uh, protecting our sources, and so never saying anything about them, never ruling anyone in or anyone out. We sometimes do it. We don't like to do it. Uh, we have another interest, which is maximizing the impact of our publications. Let me ask uh, you and, this, then. And, 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 can and you... so here, here in, order to, in order to prevent a distraction attack against our publications, we've had to uh, come out and say, no, it's not a state party. Stop trying to distract in that way. Uh, pay attention to the content. Uh, mm -hmm of the publication. So in other words, when you say state party, it wasn't another state like Russia or, or some other country. Correct. Let me ask you about WikiLeaks, and I think this could shake up the political world. Is it true, uh, an email sent in July of this year that you have that describes how funds could be diverted from the Clinton campaign to the super PACs of Jeb Bush, Carly Fiorina, and John Kasich, specifically document number 1078645, and it reads, JBCFJK PACs will be not noticeably silent for the rest of the campaign. Each will receive a significant allowance from advertising advertising budget HRC Hillary is in the loop and talk to all three personally eyes only is that a legitimate uh, I don't have that in front of me we have we have published uh, nearly a hundred thousand documents so I mean I have seen references to things like that I don't recall seeing an eyes only phrase do you recall any quid pro quo as it relates to Senator Lindsey Graham that that he would get some assistance merely in other words when he ran for re-election for the Senate I believe in 2012 I don't know. Lindsey Graham uh, is in the Podesta emails. Yes. All right. Well, that's something that maybe, hopefully, over time, we'd be able to, to follow up on. I have a, I have so many more questions for you. Let me let me ask you a, a couple of these. Um, do you think the president knows, as you do, that the source was not Russia for WikiLeaks? And I think it's important to point out that for over 10 years, WikiLeaks has never been proven wrong, not one single time. Do you believe the president is purposefully advancing this? 
this for political purposes to delegitimize Donald Trump. Yes. Do you? It's clear, it's clear if you look at the statements by uh, James Clapper. He also made an earlier statement that um, the U.S. intelligence is not aware of when we received material or how. Uh, so it, it's pretty clear that um, he, he must be getting those briefings as well if the public is getting them. Uh, so th there's a deliberate attempt to conflate. Basically, as far as the public is concerned, the only interesting that hap thing that happened uh, is that WikiLeaks published uh, a num number of different types of information, the d DNC uh, publications, John, John Podesta's, and a variety of uh, Clinton emails obtained under Freedom of Information Act. So that's what's interesting to the public. By the way, it would not be the first time the CIA was politicized. You might remember during the Benghazi case, I actually spent time on this program talking to the yeah. people that were there on the ground while the attack was going on. The American people were told a very different story, that this was, quote, a spontaneous demonstration related to a YouTube video. And I just don't know many demonstrations that are spontaneous where they happen to have in their back pocket RPGs and mortar rounds which were fired at the consulate and the well, compound. That's, that's, that's false. Uh, and our publications show that Hillary Clinton knew it's false. There's a letter from Hillary Clinton to uh, Chelsea Clinton. Yes. Uh, Chelsea Clinton uses an assumed name, Diane Reynolds, uh, and that's the day or the day the day of or the day after uh, the attack where she says, in fact, mm -hmm. it was a G Well, my uh, point was, though, group. Uh, the CIA advanced that false story that it was a spontaneous demonstration when we now know it was a terrorist attack and they advanced it through the CIA and Langley. Langley there were some people there that were playing politics at the CIA advancing a false narrative a story that we know is false. All right, Julian, if you can, just stay right there. We'll come back. We'll continue more with Julian Assange and his insight as the founder and director of WikiLeaks and more as the Sean Hannity Show continues. As we continue our interview with WikiLeaks founder and director Julian Assange. Let me ask you this. You never thought Donald Trump would win. Why? I didn't think he would win. Uh, I thought he had a much higher chance than what the polling was uh, giving. Uh, I had gone through Brexit. Uh, and there's a very similar case in Brexit where you had a, a new nationalist uh, feeling in the country and uh, disenfranchisement with existing elites. Uh, but there was polling, a number of professional pollsters coming up to Brexit, uh, and they got it wrong uh, because people uh, misled the pollsters in two different ways. Uh, and to be frank, the poll some of the pollsters also wanted to be misled. But... So those people who were going to vote against Brexit um, um, said that they were going to vote for it, and those people who were going to vote for it uh, said they're going to vote against it. And the same thing happened, it, it seems, uh, in the case of Donald Trump's election. So why is that? There was uh, intense uh, pressure in the United States from the mainstream media uh, to make people feel ashamed uh, of wanting to vote uh, for Donald Trump and to make them feel like that they had to vote for Hillary Clinton even though they didn't want to. And actually, I think it, it's this second case uh, of, of Hillary Clinton supporters falsely telling pollsters that they would vote for her and then not doing it um, that made a difference in the election. So I, I had assumed that these pollsters had seen the, the Brexit uh, situation uh, and had taken that into account. They said that they had taken it into account, and that was not true. Now... Very interestingly, I think that if the polling had been accurate, Donald Trump wouldn't have won. Interesting. Now, why do I say that? Well, Donald, uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign outspent Donald Trump by almost two to one. If the polling had been accurate, uh, b bankers and other cashed-up interests uh, would have given Hillary Clinton you know, another $5 billion dollars and she would have blasted that in advertising everywhere. But they didn't give her all that money because they didn't perceive that there was a need to because she seemed that she was four or five uh, points ahead in the polls. So they got fooled uh, by the polling and therefore didn't spend the amount of money uh, that they needed to on their campaign and didn't recruit other resources, so you know, recruit even more uh, mainstream media resources uh, to beat up Trump and to defend Clinton because they didn't think there was a need to. Let me ask you, you remember when the New York Times was going full throttle with the story about Donald Trump's taxes, which was stolen information at the time, and, and everybody in the media thought it was fair and it was legitimate coverage, and they, how they got a hold of it was not an issue in any way. 
you view yourself and you view WikiLeaks the same way. You view yourself as a journalist. Information came to you, and you disseminated that information because you felt the public had a right to know. What is the difference between what you and WikiLeaks have done versus what the New York Times and CNN does when they publish Donald Trump's taxes that were uh, that were re received illegally or received? There, there is a difference. Our stuff has more impact. Well, that's a good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I touche. I can't disagree with that. Yeah, um, very good point. But but in other words. You do view WikiLeaks. Uh, one of the things in the in the conversations that I've had with you both on radio and TV is how important it is for you to maintain a perfect record and not get anything wrong in terms of the information that you acquire, that you release. You want it to be right, and so far you've been right every time. So far we've been right for since we were founded a decade ago. Yeah, it's a it's a, a very valuable thing to have that perfect record. It's also a curse because we have to work so hard to keep it. Understood. And my big fear 10 years ago, which you and I discussed the last time you were on my radio show, when I wanted you arrested, I said, because I felt you would release potential information that would result in methods and people potentially dying because there is so much in terms of covert operations, people working undercover. You purposely choose not to publish that information, correct? Well, yes, if you're talking about Afghanistan, there were 15,000 documents that we didn't uh, didn't release. in the Because you thought people's time. lives would be in jeopardy immediately. No, but we thought that there was a, a reasonable possibility so that we wanted to study the issue further. So we, we didn't think that people's lives would definitely be in jeopardy, but we weren't sure, so we wanted to, to hold things back till we, till we understood it. Yeah. All right. I, I have a lot more questions for you. Let me let me ask you a few of these because I think this is very important for our audience to fully, completely grasp and to understand. Um, so you only had three pages on the RNC. Um, do you think the media in the U.S. is trying to scapegoat you, and what message do you have for them? Um, I don't, they're increasingly not very important. Uh, so true. Uh, I think. I think. Trump has even made this statement. I mean, they're a paper tiger uh, in this election, and uh, the new publications on the internet one can get uh, pretty directly to the people. So these old press are, are less important, uh, and the degree of bias uh, they've been showing during the electoral process, and it has come from both sides, but uh, I suppose particularly uh, the liberal press. Readers see that. Uh, they feel it. They don't like being lectured to or told what to do, and they rebel against it. I think this is, this is the other reason why Trump won that no one's speaking about, which is that kind of hectoring uh, from the liberal media in the United States and the type of advertising that Hillary Clinton was uh, putting out really turned people off because it, it seemed like those people who already had a lot of social power uh, were telling you what to do, and so you, you wanted to do the opposite. How easy, from your assessment, as somebody that has been involved in this most of his adult life now, how how secure, if you were to give a grade of 1 to 10, 10 being the most secure, how secure is America's agencies, American government, America's secrets? Everything is almost completely insecure now. The <clears throat> computer systems have become so complex that it is not possible to understand all the parts, uh, let alone secure them. It is, it is just impossible. So, and that goes for individuals as well as the government? It goes, goes for all of us, yeah. Yeah. Do you think there could be a separate operation within the Russian government, separate and apart from the information you have at WikiLeaks? Okay, so this is interesting. There's a, con there's a conflation between the th three things. WikiLeaks publications, uh, and I've told you what James Clapper says about them, uh, that they don't, can't see how the Russians transfer them to us, etc. Uh, that had the impact everyone's talking about. Uh, alleged hacks of the U.S. voting system. Uh, you just mentioned the DHS, for example, uh, and other publications appearing on the internet that no, basically almost no one has heard of. They didn't have any impact in the election. In fact, might have had the opposite impact. So, in this last category, there's uh, a site called DC Leaks and another and a WordPress site run by a guy calling himself Guccifer2. Um, now, who are behind these? 
we don't know. Do you know these so, people? Uh, and there was a couple of no, and there was a, a couple of publications uh, also by uh, The Hill and by Gorka mm -hmm. uh, and The Smoking Gun uh, that claimed that, that their documents came from, I think, from Guccifer, maybe this DC leaks. Uh, so th those look very much like uh, that they're the Russians, uh, but in some ways they they seem very amateur and they look too much like it. Mm -hmm. And so this is what, you know, far from me to quote John Bolton, or I think I should be executed or something, but he has said correctly that if something looks so much like uh, that it is meant to be the Russians, then maybe someone wants you Just think to... Just that's, a, that's such a good point. Let me ask you about the Chris Craig Murray, former British ambassador to Uzbekistan, an associate of yours. He was quoted in the Daily Mail that he flew to Washington, D.C. for the emails. He claimed he had a clandestine handoff in a wooded area near American University with one of the email sources. And the leaker's motivation was, quote, disgust at the corruption of the Clinton Foundation and the tilting of the primary election playing field against Bernie Sanders. And he said the source had legal access to the information. The documents came from inside leaks, not from hacks. Yeah, we don't comment on sourcing. Craig Murray is a former UK ambassador. He is a, a friend of mine. Uh, he is not authorized to speak uh, on behalf of WikiLeaks. Are you angry that he gave this interview? Uh, I just don't want to go anywhere near that. Okay, that's fine. Um, but can, can I ask the question in a roundabout way without being annoying? I'm not trying to be annoying here. Is it much more likely that would have happened versus the Russians? I don't want to be, be drawn on this. Okay. We, uh, have, to, we have to protect our sources. Understood. Uh, I'm the, so I, I can't be drawn on it. Okay, let me, when were you first alerted that someone had hacked these documents of Podesta? That's an interesting question, uh, trying to cast my mind back. Um, they took a, a while to prepare, um, so did the DNC leaks, so did other publications. It's quite a lot of work uh, verifying them, formatting them, indexing them, understanding them. Um, but for, for the same reason of making it hard for authorities to track uh, when our sources have communicated with us, we don't like to mention precisely when we've obtained things. Yeah, so there really is no evidence at all, and everyone's saying that the Russians has done this. Let me ask you whether, you you know in the Manning case, uh, yeah. was that a, a Russian attempt at undermining the Bush presidency with, you know, war logs giving liberals what, what they needed to erode in terms of the GOP and support and pave maybe the way for Barack Obama to win an election? Well, we're such sticklers for this kind of thing. We've never said that uh, Chelsea Manning is one of our sources. Uh, at trial, they have said that they are. Uh, but even if someone is arrested and convicted, and even if they were to plead guilty, uh, we still don't uh, say whether they're one of our sources or not. Because someone in such a situation is under, you can argue, is under some kind of form of duress. Let me, let me ask you one last question for those, especially in the media, that will but pick, they, will but pick there were up. No allegations at his trial uh, that um, uh, that he was working for the Russians. Let me ask you a question about your motivation, because in a private conversation we once had, without divulging the nature of that conversation, you said to me, I am a journalist. I, I get information that you think the public needs to know. You said to me you have no interest in information about private citizens, for example. That, yes. And that you think what you have discovered exposes, like, I, for example, I think if there were any good reporters in America, they would have taken the WikiLeaks information that I put up on a TV screen every night, and I read on my radio program on 550 stations every day and they would have taken the issue of how corrupt our media is how corrupt the clintons were and they would have made this this would have been a case bigger than watergate but for whatever reason they they've gone into this mode where you're they don't claim you're a journalist that you're a traitor and that divulging this information was only political but i do believe if it was a republican they would have been pra singing your praises day and night how do you what do you want americans to know about what your motives are well WikiLeaks has been going for 10 years. Uh, we specialize in, in obtaining information which has been suppressed from the public that is of uh, political or historical uh, importance, understanding it, analyzing it, publishing it, protecting our sources, encouraging interaction with the public. And that educates everyone and they can decide how they want to live their lives accordingly. Uh, and we've won a lot of awards for that, a lot of journalism awards. Uh, I've won the equivalent uh, the Pulitzer Prize, my own country, Australia, the Walkley Award. Sure. Uh, our other journalists have won the top 
journalism prize in their country three t- three times in the case of Kristen Frapson. So we're we're pretty good at this. Uh, we have a perfect record. No, I think you're pretty uh, good. We have, we have a pretty big impact, as you will, will have seen. Uh, and I I, I think you had a huge impact on this election, and it it makes it angers Democrats. Would you have published the same thing if it was about Donald Trump? Absolutely. Yeah. No, no problem. So there's no that. Uh, yeah. And presume you know if if Donald Trump uh, um, makes a lot of enemies uh, uh, on on the inside uh, in his time in office, um, then he could he could well face the same thing in four years' time. By the way, uh, that is the best indication that this did not come from the Russians. I don't think you meant to say that, but listen, Julian, I I do appreciate your time. I do think you had an impact, but I do think you we got to see a glimpse of how corrupt the nature. The institutions of American government and our political system are. It's actually frightening to me. Uh, it, it is. It is frightening. I, I think the. I mean, I love uh, our publications. They're, they're so rich, and you can get a very direct understanding of the power networks that exist in, uh, in D.C. and with the media and so on. Uh, at the same time, yes, they're they're disturbing. But once you know what's going on, then you can do something about it. And that was my argument about why I think America owes you a debt of gratitude for that and for the exposing uh, exposing that we have no cybersecurity. Julian, I've taken way too much of your time. Thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate it. We hope you'll come on TV soon. Thanks, Sean. Bye-bye. Take yep. care. 800-941-SEAN, our toll-free telephone.